Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the State of the Web. My guest is Andre Sitnik, lead front-end developer at Evil Martian and creator of many popular web development tools like PostCSS, AutoPrefixer, and Browsers List. And today, we're talking about developing for a global web. Let's get started. All right, so Andre, thanks for being here. I mentioned in the intro that you're the creator of many popular web dev tools. What was your motivation for creating them? Um, the first uh, tool which I created, like, become popular, uh, was Autoprefixer. And it was um, a few stories behind the project. And one of the reasons was uh, that um, I'm originally from Russia. And in Russia, there, is, uh, there was a very popular browser called Opera. Uh, but unfortunately, um, people outside of Russia and Norway I didn't know about this browser, and as a result, they didn't support it. I mean, not like testing this browser, I mean that completely ignore that this browser exists, like avoid the prefixes. I'm talking about CSS vendor prefixes when you need to write like dash webkit dash border radius at the moment, and they completely ignore the O prefix. It was maybe not so big deal because all these properties was mostly about, you know, like visual stuff, but it was, you know, not so great when you're using a website and they just avoiding, uh, don't knowing about some browsers. And especially some, it become more sensitive uh, during the mobile development when like Safari browser was extremely popular and people just start to ignore all other uh, browsers, like in, uh, avoid unprefixed version, like writing only WebKit uh, border radius and not just border radius. And all these things with prefixes become very very crazy, and as a result, it definitely should be solved by some automatical tools because it is very hard to teach people about all these best practices. It's sometimes better to just give them instrument which will care about it. So what is the user experience like for somebody visiting a website that is not developed with a global mindset? Um, the main problem, maybe it's not uh, like the real support because you know if the, the website doesn't have around our borders, it's not a big deal. Main problem was when uh, websites just uh, block your browser. Like they uh, check a uh, user agent and just show this browser is not supported. Especially it's a big problem right now when we have a lot of Chromium browsers and they work very similar to the Chrome. But unfortunately still a lot of browsers, just a lot of websites just block them. And of course it's not so great. Mm -hmm. And it's beyond just a problem of not translating into somebody's language. There are other things like the date and time that are not formatted for somebody's own locale, or even like first and last name fields. Like, do you have an example of any of these things? Yeah, like uh, I understand that like if you will translate your website, it will be better, but I understand how big is the problem. It's not a problem just translating messages. It's a problem that you need to create a community which will update the interface. And it's really hard, for instance, GitHub tried to do it, but there, uh, I decided to not go there, and I completely understand it. It's a really hard problem. But sometimes it just, you know, um, it's, it's not a problem to use English websites. It's not so big problem. At least you can use a translator in the browser. But the main problem is uh, when the whole interface is not, um, like, works very well with your culture. Like, my favorite example is a name field. Like, a lot of people I create, you know, first name and like surname or family name, but unfortunately it doesn't fit the reality of the world. It doesn't fit even a uh, Europe, because in Europe you have a countries without a family name, they use only father names. And we have a countries which use only one name sometimes. Or my favorite example, uh, in some countries is people with a name only with a one uh, character. It could be like a Chinese character, or even sometimes they just one or two or three uh, English characters in transliteration. Uh, and like websites just show them your name is too short. And <laughs> but that's my name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately. Yep, this is a problem. And so uh, if you're uh, creating a website and you need a name, just put a single field. People will figure out how to use what they should put inside. So is the global mindset something that all websites need to consider, or does it only affect people who intentionally try to target a global audience? Um, I understand that sometimes developers creating a websites, you know, very local. I don't know, some website for university. But even in this case, you no, know, we can remember accessibility. Uh, in accessibility, 
we have a lot of rules, but this rules is not important for the people who need uh, uh, stability features all the time. Sometimes any uh, every person needs some of a stability feature. You can have a very light sun on the street and can read the message, or like it's too noisy outside. And the same with um, thinking global. As I mentioned, there is a lot of people in uh, Europe which doesn't have a surname, family name. And as a result, uh, when you're making a website, it will be definitely people from these countries like living in New York because like they, their parents came there and they will have a problem. Uh, so I think thinking global is um, very important for any website because it makes uh, our solutions more flexible and flexibility is always better for the business because when you're creating a website only for one browser. I don't know, next time Opera, uh, Apple creates some new browser and your website creating only for Safari will browser. But if you're creating it for any type of the browser, it will be automatically updated when with new release of prefix on browser list. Right. Even for a website that looks at their analytics and says 100% of my users are on Chrome, so therefore I don't need to develop for any other browsers. That could be a logical fallacy if their website is inaccessible to users of other browsers. So there's some survivorship bias going yeah. on there. It's maybe, you know, when we are thinking about like short term, it may be a good idea. But, you know, if we will talk about not technology, not something being good, but just about the business, it's very important to also sometimes think about the long distance. Like need to have a balance between short term and long term. And we should, rem we should, uh, Always remember that all the problem of Internet Explorer 6 was not because it was a bad browser. In that moment, it was one some of the revolution of browsers in the world. The problem was that we start to support only these browsers, browser, and as a result, we will have the same problem right now. If we will support only Chrome, we will focus on the single browsers. It start a monopoly. Monopoly always lead us to a stagnation. This is like a common rule, and stagnation in the end will affect your business. You will have a longer time to deliver a feature, and this is very critical for business. And so I think about uh, supporting all browsers, it's like for a, a ship company to support um, lighthouses. As it's not looking uh, as a part of the business, but if you will not have a lighthouses in your country, your ship business will go very bad. And same with the browsers. We need support browsers just to have a nice, easy going business in like 10 years perspective. Mm -hmm. I like that analogy. I want to go back to auto prefixer. Yeah. You mentioned how it adds these vendor prefixes, but it's 2019 now. Is this still a big problem that developers are facing? Um, to be honest, I think you can safely remove after prefixer in the next two years. Maybe you should not do it right now because there is some prefixes which you should care, like I don't know, user select or uh, selection, which is very widely user used, but uh, and also there is a lot of uh, small Chinese browser which you should care about, and they still need prefixes. It's not a big deal to add after prefixer, but uh, even in Chinese market, like you see, browser is growing very fast, and it has very modern WebKit um, engine inside. So I think it's not um, it will be not a big deal in the next two years. And so yep, year after you will you should definitely think about removing after prefixer. Could you describe how browsers list works and how that uh, plays into the global web? Yep. Uh, I found that when we ask a developer to select like after prefixer, it inserts only actual browsers, not every, uh, not inserts only actual, actual prefixes, not uh, all prefixes. Mm -hmm. And as a result, we need a list of the target browsers. And all companies, they have some sort of the listings, not, not maybe in the file, but uh, maybe in uh, like speaking to each other. Mm -hmm. The main problem is that when we ask developers to um, write the target browsers, they will be focused only on browsers which they know. And definitely they will ignore Opera Mini or UC browsers. Maybe not because they don't need to support it. For instance, Opera Mini, uh, has more users than desktop Firefox and desktop Safari together. It's very really big market, or you see browser is really huge. But a lot of developers just don't know it and just, you know, afraid. I, uh, it's okay, but 
uh, it's a problem of uh, developing experience. If we want developers to uh, not remove unknown browsers, we should uh, use a very different uh, user interface to select a target browsers. It, and this is, was a reason of creating a browser list. In the browser list, you describe a queries, like um, some sort of more common way to describe what browsers you need to support. For instance, the last uh, two versions of each browsers, or not that browsers, which doesn't have security updates, or uh, maybe uh, bigger than 1% in my own statistics. And so browser lists do all this stuff. And it's used not only in AfterPrefixer, but also in the baby, and in a lot of very interesting tools like PostCSS Normalize or PostCSS Preset Env. So, we are thinking about the browser list as um, the single source of the truth about your target browsers. Not only for the tools, but maybe sometimes for developers, for the people. When you have a new junior developer, uh, if we will widely use browser list config, uh, he or she will know where to go to check what is the current browsers. And it will be much better to not spending your time of asking, do we need to support Internet Explorer? Right. So you've described PostCSS as a tool for tools, one of which is RTL CSS. Why is RTL so important? I will start to talking about the PostCSS to then describe RTL CSS. So PostCSS is a framework to make a CSS tools. It was created uh, when I understand that when you're making CSS tools, there is a lot of common, like you need to parse CSS, you need to generate source maps. And uh, I I wanted to have a more diversity in CSS tools. I want maybe not just in CSS tools, but in CSS itself. So um, I wanted a lot of the people to suggest new idea for the syntax, to create a polyfill, to test it in the real world, and then when you have a real experience, suggest it to CSS working group. And so it was a th um, framework to uh, tease people to create a very different solutions. And RTL CSS is one, definitely one of my favorite example about what you can do with post-CSS. Uh, RTL CSS is a tool. No, I need to start from linguistic. In uh, some of the countries, like Arabic countries on uh, Israel, uh, people writing not from the left to right, but from right to left. And, you know, language affects a way how you think. And so writing in different direction affect how you think about the space and time. Mm -hmm. And as a result for them, the time going from different directions, the future is on the left hand. And same like the most attentional part of the web page will be in the different direction, as a different part. And as a result, we need to uh, mirror the whole website. We need to put menu from one side to another. We need to uh, put a progress bar to a different direction. And RTL CSS uh, is doing all of this stuff without changing your code. There is a very nice example in RTL CSS uh, documentation when they just took uh, compiled uh, CSS of GitHub, processed it, and created an Arabic no, RTL uh, version of GitHub. It was a very nice example. So what are some things that developers can do to change their mindset and to think more globally? This is a good question. Um, of course, the main reason is not about that everyone must to think globally. Because I understand that people don't have a time. We have really a lot of things to think about. Uh, and uh, to make your site global, you need to do only a few simple things. For instance, don't block unknown browsers. If you see some browser uh, in like your like in browser list output, don't remove it just because you don't know it. Uh, try to, no rem to not remove Opera Mini if you don't sh uh, really not sure that uh, your website completely can support it. Or for instance, if you want to make your bundle smaller, don't cut all that Chinese browsers with all prefixes, just create a two different bundles. One for yes models, and it will be very small browsers for modern Chinese browsers for Chrome and Firefox. And the second one will be big for all other browsers. Uh, so it's not something really that you like, mm, should learn every day making a website global. Just don't cut uh, ways for other developers. 
but be think more global like try to be curious about other countries it's better for you as as a developer because there is a lot of interesting idea around the world for instance the adaptive design was created in russia by five years before it was created in uh, become popular in the united states uh, or for instance in china right now there is a lot of interesting experiments about technology and uh, the uh, American company already start to copy this, uh, their startups. So it definitely will be better for you to know how it works in the global web, in the global world, because as a result, you will be the better developer because you will copy this great idea. Uh, what I can suggest to do it first, um, I think it will be very better for our community if we will start to um, mix people from a different conference because right now there is a western conference and western speakers and they are together and you know in big uh, countries there is like some local communities and there is no so much movement between these two worlds my point my biggest point that people from the small local community should go to the western conference and this will be a very interesting part i understand why they are not going there they have a lot of great ideas they have a lot of great talks i don't know you can just describe how the software developing working in your country and it will be a great talk like i really waiting for a talk like about the russian design uh, on some Western conference on about the Chinese way to do it. On, I don't know about the, uh, how uh, Arabic country do all this RTL CSS stuff. It's really interesting. But a lot of the people, uh, a lot of great speakers from the country, they are afraid their accent. And I completely understand them. But there is very interesting and very simple solution. If you're afraid of your accent, you just should put everything that you need to tell to your slides in the text. As a result, even if people will not understand what you're talking about, they will read it from the slides. And it's not a problem because of your accent. It's also a problem of that people on this Western conference in the, in the center of New York, uh, more, most of them will not be native speakers. And maybe your English will be better for uh, that their English. So putting everything on the slides is a good idea. So then you should not, will not care about what you're talking and your voice will be just an emotional um, addition to your information. Mm -hmm. And it will be not a problem with having a very strong accent to make your presentation. So the first idea is to mix in speakers. But the second idea is maybe more tricky and not maybe about the globalization itself, but about the diversity of ideas. Especially right now in JavaScript, we have, when we are all creating a React websites, just because we are afraid to be blamed of not using not popular solution on some meetup, it's definitely not a good way to make resume-driven development. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So uh, we should promote smaller solutions. We should not focusing on the one solution for everything. I have a rule to think twice if I want to retweet a very popular person and think less if uh, I found interesting tweet from not popular uh, user with less followers. And I retweet some crazy interesting idea like there is right now a very interesting project called that protocol. It's a protocol to create like, a new type of web protected from the censorship and also like protected from the uh, all these privacy issues which we have right now. But also, there is a very nice idea of new way to making a website, especially with a very bad internet connection. It's called Local First. It uses a very uh, new, technically not a very new, but a very interesting scientific uh, idea called CRDT. It's not the only thing that they use. Like Local First is the idea that you have a database, some sort of database in your application. And instead of sending requests, you synchronize this database with your servers. And as a result, if internet is bad, you can still work on your mob mobile application, just wait a little longer until you will be sure that everything is synchronized. Uh, and uh, so a uh, few uh, people creating a manifest about this way to make an application called Local First, and I definitely promote it. And even right now, I'm not spending so much time on post-CSS to spend more time of creating frameworks to this idea, Right now, I'm creating Logax frameworks. That's great. 
Finally, would you recommend any resources for people who want to learn more about these tools? Uh, this is a good uh, idea. We definitely recommend a manifest of uh, local first. It's where it is heavy, which everyone should know about. I definitely recommend to look uh, somewhere outside of React frameworks. Definitely recommend to look into Svelte framework, which is really great, and React, which is very compatible with React, but have a much better performance. It's just an interesting idea to go uh, out of the box. And also, uh, I think we will uh, put a links to uh, Twitter of the people who are talking about the conference in the China and other worlds, uh, where if you're a speaker, it definitely will be a nice idea to go because it is a completely new world with new ideas. It will be very interesting. And how could people find you on GitHub? Uh, my GitHub is AI, and in Twitter, I am Sydney Code. Great. Andre, thanks for being here. This has been great. Thank you for your question. So you can find links to everything we talked about in the description below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Thank you.